Hey everyone, so this is the screencast on section four of chapter 11 in your book. It's the topic called gene expression. It's a, it's a complicated topic, which is why I'm gonna break it up into two different screencasts. So this one will be on the first part called transcription. Uh, that transcription is a way that you bring the information encoded in your DNA to an RNA form. Okay, so we've practiced this in class a little bit. I wanna give you a screencast so that you have this to refer to. Uh, I will also call this the central dogma at some point, and I'll explain why that is shortly. Okay, so we mentioned in a previous screencast that uh, DNA serves as a template, template to duplicate additional DNA. So what is the function of DNA, though? It's not, it, it doesn't just serve as a, as a template to reproduce itself. There has to be an additional function of the DNA, and, and this is what gene expression is all about. There are small segments of DNA uh, within, within your genome shown here. So this is a whole DNA strand right here. But there are little segments interspersed throughout that DNA that code for proteins. So this segment of DNA right here is called a gene. And this will probably make a lot more sense when we get to the genetics part. But suffice it to say right now that a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for a protein. How does it get to be a protein? Well, through gene expression. This whole section four of chapter 11 is how you get from the information in your DNA all the way down to, uh, to the protein level down here. So we're gonna break it down. We're gonna explain it step by step on how you get from a, uh, a gene in your DNA to a protein, okay? Uh, it's also, gene expression is also referred to as the central dogma. So a dogma is one of these things that it's an idea that is so important and has been shown to stand for such a long time that it's a dogma. It's, it's automatically assumed as correct. It's, it's a, a long-standing principle. Uh, and the dogma states that you go from DNA to RNA to protein when you're expressing genes. So you go from the gene in your DNA to RNA, and then from that message in RNA you go to protein. Of course, this is science, and science is always being tested. So they found exceptions to this central dogma, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and understand it as a dogma because that's what a lot of people in the field refer to it. You can also call it gene expression. Gene expression is probably more informative in that it tells you what's happening. Okay, so for gene expression, we're gonna focus on this first part uh, shown in this red box here. We're gonna show how you take a segment of DNA known as a gene and turn that DNA language, so the language of DNA inside that gene, we're gonna show how you transform it into the language of RNA. So we're gonna go from, RNA, uh, from DNA to RNA through a process called transcription, okay? So yeah, so the information in a gene is used to make a protein, but there's a, a, a stop that we have to make first. So you have to make RNA first before you can get to that protein. This transition from the language of DNA to the language of RNA is called transcription. So I really need you to know that term uh, for, for this topic to make sense. Okay, so some questions to ask yourself when going from DNA to RNA. Where does this process take place, okay? So if you go back a slide and you look at this, this diagram, basically you can see that everything for transcription occurs inside the nucleus. So you can see here, this is the nuclear envelope around here. So this conversion from DNA to RNA, the process called transcription is occurring in the nucleus. So I want you to understand that because that's important uh, when we get down to the, the second part. So what changes occur when DNA is converted to RNA? Well, we mentioned before that DNA is a deoxyribose nucleic acid, so it has a different sugar. There are a lot of other different properties, though, too, uh, when you compare DNA to RNA, okay? So stick with me while we discuss some of the similarities and some of the differences. Similarities first. Both DNA and RNA are nucleic acids. So these are polymers consisting of various nucleotides uh, that 
encode information that's passed on from generation to generation. So the information in your DNA is passed on, uh, say, from a parent to a child. That's kind of where the similarities differ. They're, they're both nucleic acids. The differences are, are a little more abundant. Uh, so mentioned before, the sugar, if we look at, the, at this picture of a nucleotide right here, these are the three parts of a nucleotide. Nucleotides make up both DNA and RNA, make up all nucleic acids. The sugar in the RNA nucleotide is different. So in DNA, it's deoxyribose. In RNA, it's just ribose. Okay, you don't need to know the differences beyond that. Uh, so we're not talking about deoxyribose anymore. We're talking about just ribose for that sugar. We also talked about how DNA was double-stranded, right? It gives you that ladder appearance. So this would be one strand over here. This would be another strand over here. When we talk about RNA, really what we're talking about is just a single strand. And then you'll see your bases here. So it's single-stranded. Lastly, and, and perhaps most importantly, there is a different nitrogen-containing base in RNA. In RNA, uracil replaces thymine. So there are no Ts in RNA. Okay, so these are the four bases in DNA. You have your thymine, your adenine, your cytosine, and your guanine. But for RNA, thymine is gone, and it's replaced by uracil. It's important to note, right, thymine is a pyrimidine, so of course if you're going to replace it, you're going to also place, replace it with a, a pyrimidine that's a single ring structure. Okay, so transcription, the conversion of DNA language into RNA language works a lot like DNA replication. Okay. The only difference is that instead of adding DNA bases to this single strand right here, so this, this for example is a single strand of DNA, we've broken up the double strand. Instead of adding DNA bases, so DNA nitrogen containing bases, instead we're going to add RNA bases, right? So in this instance there is no T, instead it's uracil. So with DNA, you would normally add a T right here when you saw an A. But because we're making RNA and there are no Ts, instead of adding a T, we add a U. So literally everywhere you see a U or everywhere you see an A, you're going to add a U for uracil because there are no Ts. Everything else, guys, is essentially the same. So when you see Ts, there are still an uh, adenine in RNA, so you can still add As. Okay? And then literally everything else is the same. Whenever you see a C, you add a G. Wherever you see a C, you, uh, G, you add a C. So on and so forth. Okay, so we've taken this DNA strand. That's DNA right there. And we've converted it to RNA shown here by the process of transcription. So go ahead and pause this video and take a crack at this second one and um, you know convert it, this DNA strand, into RNA down here. Okay, so pause it and go ahead and attempt it. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll go ahead and show you. So once you're done, you can unpause it and get the answer. <laughs> So it's a little tricky. You want to you want to put T's where there are A's because that's what you're used to doing in DNA replication. But because we're doing transcription, because we're making RNA now, whenever you see an A, you put a U because T's don't exist. Okay, and we'll practice this again in class. So uh, hope I hope this helped.